Hello. Can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, perfectly. Can you hear me? Yep, cool. Yeah, yes. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon, even. Looks like kind of a light agenda today, correct? It is a, a light agenda than yesterday. Um, not a lot of people joining. I will, maybe we can wait for a few minutes. We'll start at five past. Sure. Um, did the calendar invite get eaten? I sent out a calendar invite sort of maybe a couple of hours ago. Okay. I don't think it got eaten. Okay. All right. I was curious because there are multiple invites out. Oh, good. Oh, Quinton, sorry. We can't hear you. Okay, maybe we should get started. Um, Quinton, can you hear us now? Yeah, I managed to figure out my problem. I'm, I'm here, thank you. 
Awesome. All right. Um, so we have we have um, only a few uh, items on the agenda today, but um, uh, I'm hoping we can we can get through it quite quickly. But there's there's a bunch of stuff we we can um, we can formalize if we get this done. So I I just wanted to first of all um, double check that we don't have any follow ups um, on the harbor and rook. Um, project reviews I don't believe we do and, and I uh, and I believe we've submitted all the all the information um, just double checking with you Amy if if there if there's anything outstanding as far as you're aware nothing from my end and I just spun through the project board about um, uh, what's coming up so I think I think you're okay thank you all right awesome um, I'm sorry sorry I'm, to interrupt. So, Saad, was there any feedback from the TSC on um, the harbor stuff? Uh, yeah, so they've reviewed the feedback from the existing SIGs, including SIG storage. Their next steps are there are other SIGs that they want feedback from. Um, nothing that, that they need from SIG storage. Awesome. D did you get any uh, sense of what the posture was regarding um, the HA by default versus not that we brought up? Uh, it doesn't seem to be a concern for the TOC. Um, I think it was a uh, it was brought up, discussed, and it wasn't seen as a major concern, basically. Interesting. Okay, thanks. Mm, okay. Um, just a question on that. So, as a general um, as a general kind of point of reference, um, the graduated projects are supposed to be sort of ready to go for um, for production, um, and they're supposed to be sort of easy to consume by the end users and, and in, in in an optimal state. Um, are we? Do we need to specifically highlight any of those? sort of HA or, or production capable criteria in the template so that we can make sure we, we kind of tick that box going forward. Yeah, and I think we need to be clear about like what is exactly the concern because Harbor does support HA, it's just does so by saying, hey, if you want it, you need to go and set it up yourself. Uh, and so if the deployment aspect of it is critical, we need to call that out. Um, I think the TOC's position was that it's kind of unreasonable to ask Harbor to go and ensure that all of its dependencies are are deployed in a specific way through its own default deployer. Um, so, right. Yeah. yeah, I I have a personal opinion on this, and and I think I think that's a kind of a reasonable approach. What you just mentioned, Saad, but. So we do repeatedly see these architectures which are based on essentially a single point of failure relational database, be it MySQL or Postgres or whatever. And to some extent, like the whole cloud native movement is specifically to address that problem. <laughs> um, and so I think, uh, I don't know, I, I would personally say that that something that relies on a single point of failure relational database uh, is not cloud native, full stop. Um, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what other people's opinions are on the matter, but, but it, it seems, yeah, it seems like a showstopper to me if there's no easy way to make something highly available, which is the case with relational databases. Specifically, you know, traditional style databases. I I think that I think that um, criticism is fair. <clears throat> if if um if you have something which is designed, you know, to scale and to be instantiated in Kubernetes, etc., um, but then has dependencies on. Um, on something which is which is a single point of failure, that should be a cause for concern. I, I think 
if there are ways to to work around that um that should be taken into consideration. You know, I mean, specifically if, for example, Harbor has dependency on a database, um, but its default deployer doesn't deploy the database in HA, but there is a, there is a, a set of exercises, or maybe there's a, there's a Helm chart, or there's, a, there's, there's something you can use that can allow you to deploy it in HA, um, then I guess the next thing to look at would be you know what happens if that if that service has issues so so for example you know a, a database like sql or postgres that's deployed um with with ha um how does harbor cope with a failover does it need to be repointed do you have to have some sort of load balancer across a multi-master setup with databases or something you know i mean there are so many there are so many different options and i think if if that's not made clear in the project it's incredibly easy for an end user to get this wrong yeah the nice thing is that they did make it pretty clear in their documentation which is why i was able to find it when i was doing the due diligence um, i think the only difficult part is actually going in and setting it up because you have to go to a third party to figure out how to do it. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, uh, over and above that, and, and please, feel, I haven't set up like HA databases for many, many years. So please, somebody feel free to climb in and correct me. But my understanding is that it's essentially, you know, well nigh impossible. And, and that's why we have um, projects like Vitesse, for example, that I mean, it's a whole project designed to make MySQL like highly available and scalable. Um, and I, my understanding is that there isn't actually a simpler way of doing it. And so any notion that one can actually create, you know, set up MySQL to be highly available and scalable is not true. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. You, you either have to have manual uh, master slave failover uh, or, or something like that because there isn't a there isn't a way to have seamless automated failover which is the essence of cloud native computing well we have Sue Hugo and Tom on the call maybe they can chime in uh, yeah I, yeah what Quinton says is kind of true um, the only the only alternative is to uh, use a mounted storage that is uh, uh, durable and take the hit on the HA. If the pod goes down, it comes back up and performs recovery from another, when it comes, uh, yeah, when it comes back up, it performs recovery and continues. Uh, there's possibility of a little bit of data loss. You may lose your last transaction or something, depending on how you set it up. Um, but uh, it's generally true, but um, it is also true that um, uh, practical considerations can be brought in and given that um, we want to encourage more storage to move into Kubernetes. I don't know how strict we want to be about this. Mm. Yeah, I think we should differentiate between kind of different levels of HA, right? So if we're talking about a single site and we're talking about, you know, synchronous replication across uh, multiple instances within that site, I think that's what we're talking about for, for Harbor uh, versus kind of geographic HA, multi-site HA, uh, which is, uh, like Quinton mentioned, much more of a challenge. No, but, but just to be clear, I'm not talking about multi-site at all. I, I'm just talking about uh, a data store which needs to be transactional. So if you, you know, upgrade your containers uh, in in the repository, you need to know that it's actually there, and because the entire cluster depends on on that version being there, and and if the repository becomes unavailable or gets corrupted your entire uh, cluster is is potentially failed. 
Uh, I, don't, I don't mean to sort right. of like overstate the, 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 the seriousness of it, but, but in reality, you know, you have this, you have a, you know, perhaps a global outage going on, uh, you fix the bug, you, you send it to your repository and your repository loses that transaction because, you know, it's asynchronous replication, whatever. Uh, you now, you know, have this ongoing global outage, uh, or, or rather at least, you know, cluster-wide outage, um, which is kind of, you know, and, and that's sort of inevitable. It's, it's going to happen. Uh, and that's what cloud computing and cloud native storage is designed to solve is that you don't have those situations. Um, so, so yeah, no, but don't, please don't confuse it with multi-site replication or anything else. I'm just talking about the very basic use case and making sure that the uh, that the repository is available when you need it and transactionally sound. But wouldn't wouldn't the same problem exist for something like an etcd for Kubernetes? Or I, I don't understand databases that well. So no, Kubernetes. I mean, etcd is fundamentally transactionally sound. Uh, you have three nodes. They agree on who the master is. Uh, they agree on all the transactions that are committed, and if any one of them fails, or in fact, yeah, in some cases you have five, but let's just use three, uh, any one of those nodes can go down. You don't lose any transactions. Everything is perfectly uh, sound, and nothing becomes unavailable. So th that's, that's essentially what I'm talking about, is there's a fundamental difference between having a etcd type system underlying your... Um, storage and and having a relational a single point of failure relational database if you don't have something like the test on top of it so by the way even uh, uh, people don't trust uh, people that go into production with with test don't even trust a cd uh, they actually uh, some of them actually uh, were asking about what if we lose all the etcd data so uh, one design principle of the test is that if the etcd data is lost, it can be manually reconstructed. Uh, so the entire cluster can be redeployed, even if uh, all the data is wiped. But uh, I would trust etcd or zookeeper or console. Uh, we test can use all of them. But yeah, it, does, it, did take a, it did take a lot of effort to get to that point. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, irrespective of what people believe, uh, I mean, if you burn down an entire data center and all the hard drives in it, by definition, all data is gone and there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> um, uh, unless you've, you know, synchronously replicated it somewhere else. So, so I don't think the expectation is to be unrealistic like that. But to be very clear about what failures you can tolerate and what failures you can't tolerate. Now, burning down an entire data center is not a failure that anybody claims to be able to tolerate without any outage. Uh, however, losing a single machine is, um, and with a relational database, I'm not aware of it being possible to handle the failure of that machine without losing some data or uh, being unavailable for some period of time until some human intervenes and, uh, you know, and, and you lose some transactions, as you pointed out. Uh, that's the essence of the problem. I guess I guess what we're debating here is um, the implementation of those backend dependencies. So the way the way you instantiate and the way you configure um, those dependencies can have a huge outcome on on things like availability because you know things like things like etcd while they lend themselves to that sort of technology also have kind of you know some weird things depending on how you deploy them so for example you know the etc the default etcd operator keeps keeps data um in ephemeral storage and and, and if you know you just if, if three pods crash you you could actually just lose your data and have to restore a backup um but obviously that's based on how it's implemented and i, and I think the same could possibly be argued for databases like like mysql and and Postgres, you know, if if you're using um, if you're using a master-slave relationship with with some sort of asynchronous um, replication, you can 
almost certainly guarantee that there will be some sort of data loss. If, if on the other hand, for example, you're using um, um, a transaction log and you don't acknowledge transactions until they're committed to the transaction log and the transaction log is synced to disk and the disk is replicated somehow so that you can restart the pod somewhere else um, and that replication is synchronous, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you know, then theoretically you can probably achieve strong consistency on, on those sorts of databases too. Um, but it, it is very, very dependent on the, on the deployment mechanism. And, and this is why I was kind of specific, you know, I was kind of curious and asking Saad, how well is it defined on how you deploy those things in HA? Because um, almost certainly a default thing in a Helm repo won't do the right thing um, for these sorts of requirements. Yeah, that's a it's a good question. So on the on the uh, documentation for Harbor, they've basically listed a requirement for Postgres and Redis, and they've said that by default, their uh, Helm chart is not going to deploy in HA. And if uh, that is important to you, that you should uh, uh, you know set that up yourself and uh, manually deploy uh, deploy those dependencies. And that's uh, kind of left up uh, to, you know, as an exercise for the user. Uh, and uh, speaking with the, the Harbor maintainers, they said that the default Postgres and Redis uh, Helm charts do enable an HA deployment. So to Quinton's question, uh, I'm, I, I don't know how well that works out of the box, but it is supposedly supported. So, so to the best of my ability, uh, to, to the best of my knowledge, and, and please, anybody feel free to correct me, it is not actually possible to deploy Postgres in an HA in scalable fashion, or even HA, uh, to the point that, that Sugu mentioned earlier. So, so to wave one's hands and say, well, if you want it HA, then do it yourself, uh, is only fine if that's possible. I, I, as far as I'm aware, that's not possible. And that's why, as I said, that's why we have the tests and etcd and other things where it is possible. Um, that, that's the essence of my concern. And, and if it was, and this is to be clear, not, not a pointing a finger at Harbor specifically, uh, Harbor just happens to be an example of something that relies on a single point of failure relational database um, that has not been demonstrated to be deployable in an HA fashion and on which the entire cluster depends. Uh, and there is a whole class of these applications and we've seen many of them being submitted to the CNCF. And I do think, you know, without wanting to like flog a dead horse, I do think that if we're going to call ourselves the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, and if we have as a principle that Cloud Native is highly available and scalable, uh, we need to actually demonstrate that by not graduating projects that are demonstrably not highly available and not scalable. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's fair feedback. Um, could you uh, write up that quickly uh, on the storage SIG due diligence issue, and I will take a note to bring this up to the TOC, surface it as, hey, we discussed sure. it in SIG storage, and this was- uh, I thought I did it. that already, but but if if it's, uh, is, is any, I wrote all this down previously in the issue and all due diligence. Um, okay, I'll look it up if not it's there, then that's- Adequate, if, if, I'm happy to add to it if it's not clear, but I think I already made that clear. If you look at the notes from uh, was it two or four weeks ago? I don't remember the notes for this meeting. Uh, I put it in words there. Um, okay. Cool. As long as it's writing somewhere, it'll be easy to, to point to. And and this is from memory. So so if if it's not sufficiently detailed uh, or or specific, uh, let me know and I can I can flesh it out some more. Sure. Thanks. So the question is, uh, um, uh, uh, the Project owners probably are thinking that they are uh, past this point. They'll probably be uh, upset if they hear that we are, will they be, are they likely to be upset if we 
now are going to say that we are rethinking this or is that okay by a project no, i think sorry go ahead i just wanted to clarify what you meant sorry go on go on sugo uh, no, I was uh, just asking. Uh, I mean, I, I agree with uh, Quinton's point. Uh, what he said is uh, actually true. Um, so uh, the, uh, the only thing I was worried about is, uh, um, I mean, the reason why I wanted, uh, I, I thought it, it was okay was because metadata not being highly available by some people is treated as acceptable, but if it is not reconstructable, then it's a huge problem. Uh, and I don't know if that is a property of Harvard. Like if you lost all your metadata, can you reconstruct it annually? Uh, we could uh, let them off the hook if that was the case. But otherwise, yes, it is a definitely a concern. And, uh, and in principle, everything that Quinton said is 100% true. But uh, the, the bigger question for me was, we thought we said, okay, that is, uh, we find that acceptable, but uh, or uh, if we have not said so, I think it's fine. We can go back and say that they need to address it. Uh, to, to be so, clear, what I what I suggested we do, and I think what Saad did was, we highlight the fact that this thing is not available, and um, we defer to the TOC to decide whether they would like to delay. Um, so, so, so the project has already stated that they plan to support more highly available backends. Um, oh, got it. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Yeah, now I understand. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And so, so yeah, the question was just, do, do the TOC want to delay graduation until that work is finished, or do they want to graduate it now? Got it. And, got it. and so I, I, I agree with you. Uh, if it were my decision, I would delay graduation until that work's finished. They've decided not to, and, and that's that's the prerogative of the TOC and that's reasonable. My question is actually, or my concern is actually much more general than, than Harbor. And I'm not having a go at Harbor particularly. I'm, I'm just wanting us to come to a clear conclusion on the point of this entire class of things that are based on single point of failure relational databases upon which an entire cluster depends. We need to make a blanket decision as to whether those projects can graduate before they provide highly available backends or not. And, and my point fairly strongly is that I do not think we should. I don't think it creates the right precedent for the CNCF if we do graduate such projects, forgetting about Harbor for the moment. Um, and I don't want this. I, 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 yeah. I, 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 I think you're, you're perfectly right. And, and maybe we should just bring this up at the at the next um, TOC meeting, for yeah. for what it's worth, after the last after the last TOC meeting, Aaron did email the, the TOC mailing list and said, "Look, based on based on these issues, we're we're not um, you know we're not okay to recommend graduation um, as a SIG, um, and and we'd like further clarity on this." And and I just I just copied it into the chat window just to make sure everybody had seen that email. Um, so, so I, I think it's it's perfectly fine for us to to raise this um, at the next TOC meeting. Um, I'll I, I'll add it to the I'll add it to the um, sort sig uh, uh, agenda or update for the next time. Thank you, and sorry for occupying so much time. I just wanted to make to clearly communicate what I was trying to say because uh, I think it was misunderstood a few times. I will now be quiet. Thank you. I, I, I think this is important. It's, it was worth the discussion. Thanks. Um, okay. So, so I had, um, I had two other things on the agenda, um, and then I can open it up to the floor in case there's anything else that, that people want to cover. Um, oh, Alex, so, so as discussed, uh, yes. Alex, I think for Sig Runtime, they actually added on that PR that they are recommending for, for this one to move forward. Maybe not in that document, but on that pull request itself, I see something. It said that we reviewed DD in SIG runtime and looks very solid. It's on that PR 331. Yeah, I, I think, I think um, Harbor, Harbor is an unusual project in that multiple SIGs are 
reviewing it. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I just think, did. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm I think it's, it's fine. Run time at the moment to 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 clarify all that. Um, so yeah, let, I'm working yeah, with them. I'm saying I your email, uh, the the email that you're proposing here said the uh, Sigma Runtime has not uh, provided a recommendation, but they actually have. So just that, yeah. Sure. Oh, it's, it's. I mean, that that email was sent sort of a couple of weeks ago. So. so oh, you sent you sent this email. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It it went to the oh, TFC I, email. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, I thought you were going to send. Okay, got it. Thanks. Uh, I think the way things are moving at the moment, so SIG runtime is actually supposed to coordinate all the responses from all of the SIGs, which it hasn't done yet. Um, and also, there's a document that that outlines. So each SIG should should kind of describe what they looked at and give a summary of their findings. And that hasn't been done yet, and that's what the TOC noted, and that seems like what is happening now. Um, and SIG Runtime is responsible for doing that. I'm actually one of the co-chairs there. I've been a bit slack about getting it together, but uh, that's what we're busy with at the moment. Yeah, so awesome. Wow, so 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 you get to have a double lock in this case. <laughs> All right. Um, so moving on to the next agenda item. So um, as discussed last time, um, I have created um, a copy of the uh, of our storage landscape white paper, um, given it a V two title, and I've copied in um, the database section um, that uh, Suku had worked on and that we had reviewed. Um, and I copied in the, um, the updated um, management and CSI section um, that, that Xing had put together um, and that we had reviewed and agreed. Um, there is one outstanding uh, small piece of work that I need to copy in, which is the, the database comparison um, table from from the database doc because I, I I just didn't finish it in time um, but once that is done um, I'd like to suggest that we um, that we move forward with uh, with publishing the the landscape v2 white paper and I'll raise um, a, a service desk request um, with the CNCF um, so maybe we can um, publish this on the website and, and you know maybe have a blog or, or, or some other marketing content around it to 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 make sure it's it's visible to the community anybody have any discussion items or or would like to sort of review it in a bit more detail or any questions Okay. Um, of course, the document the document is uh, the document link is is included in the minutes. Um, it would be really great if people could just scan through it and just make sure we, you know, I haven't messed anything up or, or, or um, made any mistakes. Um, and obviously, feel free to to comment um, on anything that you need or think might need an update or whatever. Awesome, thanks for all your hard work on that, Alex. Just one parting comment. Uh, we had we had a bunch of things that we sort of were targeting for uh, KubeCon Europe, which is obviously now postponed. Um, I would like us to, or like to encourage us to just uh, stick with our plans, even though the actual KubeCon has been postponed. Let's let's try and uh, get all of those to do items done, you know, by KubeCon's original date. <laughs> Um, which I think we can do, and we've got most of the work done, um, uh, rather than let it slide. Because I'm pretty sure that we're going to have another deluge of things that need to be done by the new KubeCon date. There are going to be a bunch of projects that arrive and want to, you know, join the sandbox and be graduated and etc. by the new date, whenever that turns out to be. And so let's let's not let the existing stuff slide uh, beyond that date. Hopefully we all have a little more time because we're no longer going to KubeCon. Uh, so, so you get a free week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, that makes complete sense. So, so just to recap, the, the three things that we had wanted to do was um, this, the V2 of the storage landscape, the 
the abuse case um, template and the performance doc. The performance doc has slowed a little bit. Um, we have people working on it, but um, um, yeah, we need to we need to speed that up a little bit. Um, and the the use case uh, template was going to be the next thing on the agenda. So does everybody have the link from the um, meeting minutes? Otherwise, I'll paste it into the chat window. Actually, uh, uh, the meeting minutes, is there a link for that on the CA, on the GitHub page? Because I, I thought I saw there it is, last time. There is, yeah. I don't see it now, though. Uh, it should it should be in the GitHub page, and it's it should also be in the meeting invite. Um, let me let me um, two secs. I'll I'll send you the link. Uh, oh, I see it. Uh, it's the Bitly uh, link. Found it. That, that's right. Right. Yeah. Cool. Um, right. So. So the use case document, um, this has been something that we've kind of gone back and forth a few times. I'm just going to give a one minute summary just to bring everybody back up to speed and remind everybody of the various discussions that have happened so far. So, so the use case document was um, something which we wanted to do as a SIG, um, as a follow up to the landscape. And the idea was that the landscape described things like the storage attributes and the management interfaces and the different storage topologies and, and, and things like that. Um, and what we wanted to do was that then take that, um, take the, the information from that content and apply it to some specific use cases. Um, initially, we, we had kind of discussed having specific use cases after much debate, we, and, you know, especially around CNCF and king making and that kind of thing. We, we, we settled on having use case categories um, instead of uh, instead of you know specific use cases, um, and the um, and we had we've we've had um, uh, a few discussions about what those um, categories uh, should be. We 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 put together um, uh, the first five categories that, that we think needed to be tackled, which were databases, object stores, message queues, instrumentation. So under instrumentation, I'm thinking of, um, you know, things like Prometheus, for example, um, and KV stores. Um, and the idea would be that we would have um, a use case document um, for the category um, in GitHub. Um, and that use case document might then have um, one or more options to describe, you know, more um, specific examples uh, of that of that category. So, so for example, um, the 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 use case um, for databases might have um, two or three examples to discuss. You know, a single instance database, a replicated database, a sharded database, that kind of thing. Um, similarly, you know, for, for KV stores and whatever else. Um, so far, so good. Any questions on that? Okay. Um, so if we, if we look at the, the use case template, um, we've kind of, we've taken the template that, um, that Luis had um, started working on, had circulated within within that working group, um, and I've taken that, put it into a, a Google document, um, and added um, a few additional sections. So we we kind of start off with um, some simple goals and non goals, which which is is more to to kind of describe what's in scope and what's out of scope, and make that clear to the to the reader. Um, we then have uh, storage attributes section, and this is based on the attributes from the landscape white paper. So, so when you know when we talk about availability um, or scalability or performance or whatever else, what those different use cases um, 
um, are dependent on. You know, we even have a section on consistency, which which would you know be a great discussion point for you know following on from the HA discussion we just had now, um, etc. Um, and then finally durability as well. Um, we talk about the storage topology, um, and we're we're kind of having here. Um, uh, a tick box kind of thing to make it easy for the end user to sort of say these different topologies are recommended or not recommended for um, a particular um, a particular use case category. Um, we we also then discuss you know if if we're talking about say block stores or or distributed file systems for example or or things like that um, what we recommend. Um, or what we don't recommend for for those for those um, um, particular categories, um, and then um, I've added in um, I've added in some sample text to kind of cover um, things like deployment and instantiation options. Um, so so these are, for example, I actually used um, the examples that um, that Suku had put together in the in the database document as a, as a starter for 10, but, but we can we can update those. Um, so what I'd like to do is if we can get agreement um, on the template, um, perhaps we can have uh, two or three um, two or three people maybe work together and pick um, pick a particular category um, and and create an example. Um, of that uh, based on the template and just to see if it works and kind of give an idea of what an example template would look like. Um, comments, thoughts, queries? Yeah, I think it'd be great to get one or two um, canonical examples of the use of the template out so that we can kind of set the tone and then hopefully the rest of the community will pick up and, and replicate those for other areas. Okay. Uh, um, is there anybody on the call that particularly wants to work on this? I'm I'm happy to to um, to work on it with them, and and obviously Luis, although he's not on the call, will um, will be helping uh, to 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 drive this as well. Uh, I had uh, nominated DP to uh, come up with one for Vitesse. I'll ping her again. Okay, cool. All right, so what person to do this, but uh, uh, I don't know if I can get his time. <laughs> so, so, so that's fine. What, what, I'll, what I'll do is um, I'll, I'll set up a time. Um, I'll set up a time with with Luis, and we'll work through the example. I'll I'll send an email to and uh, and a Slack message onto the to the to the whole group. Um, and anybody who wants to to join can can join. We can help iterate through one example, um, and then we'll 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 share it out at the um, at the next uh, storage sig meeting. I think you can if we can get Luis. PR in, then that'll be a good example because that has been there well, quite some time, right? No, that's 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 true. So, so Luis's Luis's PR, um, we had discussed it, um, and we just need to refine it because the and 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 this was kind of like the output of it. Um, so, so I've already met with Luis, and and we 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 kind of discussed this because. Um, when we when we discussed the PR, we kind of got a lot of feedback around. You know, we didn't want it to be specific to Minio, and we didn't want it to be specific to a particular project. We 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 wanted it to be to be um, um, more uh, more suited to a category. So so we we just need to refactor it so that it's category driven rather than project driven. Alex, it might be a good idea to to speak to. Uh... Shing and find out, sorry, not the Shing we have here. Uh, sorry, uh, Liang, um, and uh, maybe get one for etcd and more broadly for the category of KB stores. 
yes, yes, that's a very good idea. I think I think he he's particularly good at these and or could find somebody, uh, for example, who knows about KB stores to write a fairly authoritative guide. It would be great if we could pass it by some of the other KB stores. Um, TIKV is one obvious example and maybe console uh, and make sure that the thing represents, you know, a, a generic uh, set of recommendations for deploying KB stores on cloud native stuff. Cool. Okay. Yep. I'll do that. Good call. All right. So, so if there's um, if there's no other uh, if there's no other discussion points on this, um, I didn't have anything else on the agenda. So, are there any other business items or or any other things that we need to cover today? Hey, um, I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Derek Moore. Hi, Derek. Yeah. Well, I'm pleased to be here. Um, just been kind of listening in. Uh, I'm with uh, Dell EMC, and we've been talking to the Linux Foundation um, about moving one of our projects over um, to be hosted with one of the Linux Foundation umbrellas. Um, as a part of Dell EMC's uh, streaming data platform product that, that we're working on, um, we, the heart of that product has an open source component called Pervega, which is, um, uh, you might think of it as a message queue, but it's really a stream store for, uh, for the perpetual storage of unbounded streams. Um, it, it's not quite a Kafka or Pulsar competitor, but that's um, one way to think about it with Heritage at Dell EMC, it's predominantly a storage product um, or a storage platform. Um, it uses like Bookkeeper and HDFS for like tier one and tier two, or or when used in conjunction with Dell's products, it would use um, um, ECS or Isilon as um, as tier two storage, or you know we have S3 connectors and so on. But um, we we have uh, um, we're built on top of Zookeeper and Bookkeeper, among other things, and we have. We have built our own Kubernetes operators um, for Prevega, for um, Bookkeeper, and for Zookeeper. So some of those we will be contributing upstream. And, um, and we, we want to look at Rook, um, if there would be advantages for Rook integrations. And, and we may start in the LFAI umbrella, but I feel like there's a lot of synergies with um, the CNCF storage special interest group. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there. Um, maybe I'll put a few links in the chat. Um, but, but as we join, as, as we look to join the Linux Foundation, I think, you know, we'll, we'll at least be interacting, if not um, um, kind of working more closely. We were, we've recently been added to the CNCF landscape, as well as the um, LFAI landscape. Uh, and we're looking for which which one of those will incubate in, and then um, and I was looking through some of the documents previously, but also the version twos that were posted today or these use cases, and you know we would almost fit in a new segment, um, you know maybe similar to message queues, but truly a stream store, um, and we can right. you know, our streams can be of events or they can be true byte streams, you know they can be video byte streams and so on. Um, so I just wanted to say hello and, um, and give you guys that. So, so welcome. <laughs> it's always good to have, uh, it's always good to have, uh, new people attend. Um, that's really great. Um, we, we have, uh, we have gotten, um, a fairly straightforward template and process, um, that you can follow, um, if you want to, um, if you want to uh, suggest a project for um, a sandbox, um, I think you know if if you want to um, if you want to share some some 
links or whatever to the project we can we can cer certainly circulate i mean certainly a, a first point would might be to circulate some links to the project um to the mailing list and see if you know there are any questions um but if you want to go ahead i know you're trying to decide between cncf and um and the the ai um uh lf etc um if you do want to go for the cncf there is a really simple pro process to follow for the sound box and effectively the talk the TOC with triage that request and then send it to the SIG for for review and you would present to the um, you would, you could present to the SIG and sort of describe the, the, the project and, and we could write up a, a quick recommendation. Yeah, I would, I would actually suggest, irrespective of whether you choose the CNCF or not and what what the TOC decides, I think it'd be great to have a presentation anyway, just for the general awareness of the SIG of what you guys are doing. Um, and then, you know, that would naturally, if things went that way, it would naturally lead into um, us being able to recommend or otherwise to the TOC. So I think, yeah, either way, it'd be great to have the presentation uh, would be my suggestion. And maybe we could do that in two weeks time if that's long enough to prepare something. Yeah, that, that would be great, actually. I think that'd be beneficial, you know, no matter how this lands. Um, and one of my concerns is if we did land on the LFAI side, I think there would still be reason to interact with the storage SIG. So, I was curious what the what the relationship is between uh, your project and and AI. It, it wasn't absolutely clear. Well, but streaming analytics is one of the major use cases for this platform, and that fits in pretty well with LFAI um, and, and what they're doing. They're also a little easier to onboard into and a little less crowded. We're working with Chris and Ibrahim at the Linux Foundation level to decide where, you know, where to orient this. Um, okay. But, but I think we want, we almost want to like, you know, span a little bit more regardless of where we home ourselves. Um, yeah, it sounds, sounds like there's a lot of overlap with, with a lot of cloud native stuff in general. Um, yeah. Um, All right, so, so why don't we do, why don't we do as, as Quentin suggested, let's, let's um, get a presentation on the agenda for, for uh, the next meeting in two weeks. Yeah, that'd be great. I'll uh, get that together. Maybe that would be myself and um, a gentleman named Flavio. So uh, we can take care of all that offline, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, that's fine. Should are, I hop on the mailing on the, list? Uh, definitely. Yeah, that definitely hop onto the mailing list. Um, are you on the CNCF Slack by any chance? Um, no, I can do that as well. All right. Um, if you... Um, if you if you hop onto the mailing list and, and um, uh, just ping us the details, um, I'll get it stuck on the agenda for sure. Um, but in the meantime, if you want to email me directly or or uh, Slack me, that's that's cool too. Okay, great. Well, pleased to meet you guys. Thanks All for right. hearing me out. Thanks for joining. It's always good to hear about new projects. Okay, I think we're nearly time. Do we have anybody, um, any other business to cover? No. All right. Um, in that case, uh, we can call this meeting to an end. Thank you everybody and have a good rest of your day. Thanks Alex. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye everyone. Thanks.